How Apuleius thinking to eat roses, was cruelly beaten by a gardener, and chased by dogs. When noon was come, that the broiling heat of the sun had most power, we turned into a village to certain of the thieves' acquaintance and friends, for verily their meeting and embracing together did give me, poor assy, cause to deem the same, and they took the truss from my back, and gave them part of the treasure which was in it, and they seemed to whisper and tell them that it was stolen goods, and after that we were unladen of our burthens, they let us loose in a meadow to pasture. But mine own horse and Milo's assy would not suffer me to feed there with them, but I must seek my dinner in some other place. Wherefore I leaped into a garden which was behind the stable, and being well nigh perished with hunger, although I could find nothing there but raw and green fallots, yet I filled my hungry guts therewithal abundantly, and praying unto all the gods, I looked about in every place if I could espy any red roses in the gardens by, and my solitary being alone did put me in good hope, that if I could find any remedy, I should presently of an assy be changed into Lucius out of every man's sight. And while I considered these things, I looked about, and behold I saw afar off a shadowed valley adjoining nigh unto a wood, where amongst diverse other harbies and pleasant vergers, methought I saw bright flourishing roses of bright damask color, and said within my bestale mind, Verily that place is the place of Venus and the Graces, where secretly glistereth the royal H.E.W., of so lively and delectable a flower. Then I desiring the help of the guide of my good fortune, ran lustily towards the wood, insomuch that I felt myself that I was no more an assy, but a swift coursing horse, but my agility and quickness could not prevent the cruelty of my fortune, for when I came to the place I perceived that they were no roses, neither tender nor pleasant, neither moistened with the heavenly drops of dew, nor celestial liquor, which grew out of the thicket and thorns there. Neither did I perceive that there was any valley at all, but only the bank of the river, environed with great thick trees, which had long branches like unto laurel, and bearing a flower without any manner of scent, and the common people call them by the name of laurel roses, which be very poison to all manner of beasts. Then was I so entangled with unhappy fortune that I little esteemed mine own danger, and went willingly to eat of these roses, though I knew them to be present poison, and as I drew near I saw a young man that seemed to be the gardener, come upon me, and when he perceived that I had devoured all his harbies in the garden, he came swearing with a great staff in his hand, and laid upon me in such sort, that I was well nigh dead, but I speedily devised some remedy myself, for I lift up my legs, and kicked him with my hinder heels, that I left him lying at the hill foot wel nice lane, and so I ran away. Incontinently came out his wife, who seeing her husband half dead, cried and howled in pitiful sort, and went toward her husband, to the intent that by her load cry she might purchase to me present destruction. Then all the persons of the town, moved by her noise came forth, and cried for dogs to tear me down. Out came a great company of band dogs and mastiffs, more fit to pull down bears and lions than me, whom when I beheld I thought verily I should presently die, but I turned myself about, and ran as fast as ever I might to the stable from whence I came. Then the men of the town called in their dogs, and took me and bound me to the staple of a post, and scourged me with a great knotted whip till I was well nigh dead, and they would undoubtedly have slain me, had it not come to pass a, that what with the pain of their beating, and the green harbies that lay in my guts, I caught such a lask that I all besprinkled their faces with my liquid dung, and enforced them to leave off.